afternoon. As you all know, I am Seda Kisay Zehra from South Asia Research Institute for Minorities. And you all are watching an exclusive interview with Dr. Abhay Kumar. Dr. Abhay Kumar is a writer, journalist, and activist. He is a regular contributor to newspapers and web portals. He writes in English, Urdu, and Hindi around the broad themes of Indian Muslim and social justice. Recently, he has done his PhD thesis at the Center of Historical Studies, JNU. He based in New Delhi. So let's welcome him. Hello, Dr. Abhay Kumar. Thank you for joining us. How are you? Uh, thank you very much for uh, giving me this opportunity. Uh, I really appreciate and I express my gratitude to your organization for giving me this opportunity to express my views. Thank you very much uh, to you also and Dr. Khurram also. And, uh, the, uh, and I welcome and I thank everybody whose name I am not able to uh, take here. So let's start. Uh, let's move to our very first question. Could you please tell us about Dr. Abhay Kumar, whom you are familiar with? And people are curious to know how you became interested in journalism. See, uh, I never thought that I will become a journalist. Uh, interestingly, after my uh, matriculation, that is uh, after passing class 10th examination, uh, I started learning Urdu. Um, it was not taught uh, at the primary level. You know, in India, after partition, Hindi was uh, promoted and Urdu was not given its uh, just place. When I learned Urdu uh, on my own with the help of uh, some teachers, it was not a formal education. I started writing some letters and some small articles to Urdu daily based in uh, Patna in Bihar. And then gradually my interest in journalism increased. And then I was told by some of my seniors that if you are really serious about uh, doing journalism and earning money, uh, from journalism, then you should opt for English journalism, not Urdu journalism. You know Urdu, that is very good, but go for English journalism because it has got uh, better opportunity. You will get more opportunities uh, in English journalism. So I did my BA English honors from Patna. Then I studied uh, journalism at uh, uh, Delhi. The institute it, uh, institute's name is... Uh, Indian Institute of Mass Communication, which is located near JNU, where I am speaking right now. So I learned it. Uh, I, I, I did my diploma, postgraduate diploma uh, from IMC. Then I worked for two years uh, in uh, Indian Express. I was a reporter, a reporter in New Delhi. But uh, due to my interactions with the friends in JNU, because my media institute was located in uh, in, in JNU campus. So I became more and more interested in academics. So after two years, I thought that I'm young and doing PhD, studying MA, studying political science and social sciences are not a bad idea. So I left uh, newspaper, Indian Express, and then I came to Jamia. I did my MA political science there. Again, I joined JNU where I did my MA in international relations and MPhil and PhD in uh, history, modern history. And my broad areas of interest uh, are, as you have said, minority politics, social justice, human rights, media, so and so forth. Oh, that's great. Thanks. Move to the second question. What inspired you to do such extensive research on prejudice against Muslims, as well as other minorities, such as Dalit and Christians? who face persecution and in social injustice. See, when I'm speaking for the rights of uh, uh, Muslims, I'm not doing any charity to them. I think um, many people think, oh, I'm such a great person. I'm just like a Messiah, uh, Masiha, and I'm just speaking about them because I'm not a Muslim, I'm a Hindu, and a Hindu is speaking for the rights of Muslims. That is not uh, the case. Every citizen, um, must speak for the rights of uh, fellow human being, not human being. Even we should speak for the rights of uh, what do I say? The animal, the plants, the environment, the earth. So in India, I have realized uh, that uh, uh, that 
upper caste hindus are getting more privilege they are getting more protections by the state while those who are not upper caste hindus uh, such as muslims dalits who were uh, ex untouchables christians adivasi indigenous people backward classes they were not treated fairly so i uh, i thought that this is my respons- responsibility as a journalist as a human being as a concerned citizen to speak for them and i sometimes feel that what if i were a muslim and i would have uh, been facing the same problem so i realize that to uh, stop to prevent to oppose uh, attack on anybody uh, whether the oppressor are hindus or muslim uh, this fact doesn't matter whether the person who is facing oppression whether that person is hindu or muslim it doesn't matter we must uh, speak against injustice if i am uh, speaking for the rights of let's say minorities in india who are n- non hindus i will definitely speak for the rights of uh, minorities in pakistan who are non muslims so i am not doing any charity uh, this is my responsibility and i should do more and more work i should do more and more work and i should uh, stand with them this is my uh, duty it's not uh, uh, something that i am uh, doing Uh, because i am a great person no 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 we must speak in pakistan you should speak for the rights of minorities i should speak in india and this, this, and that is why your organization or me or many other scholars from india and pakistan they are coming together but because we are for the rights of minority the most uh, what should i say the most vulnerable sections and i want to co- what one thing that uh, the positions the conditions of minorities uh, is reflective of the condition of any society if minorities are not well i don't think that my country has become great we have to protect everybody no human rights violation should happen yes i agree thank you so the next question is you have a history of contributing to local newspapers and websites which type of news pieces do you often write what are the some topics that you focus in your research see uh, i generally write on the topics of let's say minorities lower castes dalits who are ex untouchables adivasi who are indigenous people they are facing attack from uh, uh, the elites uh, from india the elites include not only political leaders hindutva forces hindu nationalists right wing hindu communal forces but also corporate uh, loot is also happening uh, for example adivasis are living in central india mostly and their place uh, is also the place where uh, let's say uh, natural resources are lying so they are being displaced and all kinds of uh, atrocities and attacks are being carried out uh, dalits who are ex untouchables are still not treated equally and you have asked me that where do i write uh, you know it very well that mainstream media has always been a spokesperson of the ruling classes of the elites but since 2014 when the new government has come in india that is hindu nationalist government that government is increasingly controlling media and freedom of an expression is increasingly being attacked so the space at mainstream media is shrinking those people who are just mouthing the position of the government is given a space so i mostly contribute at alternative places i write in urdu i write in english i also upload videos i also do interview but these are mostly alternative platforms in mainstream media we are not fit uh, we are not considered good enough to write and we are being punished not because of our standard and our content because of our position so we are being discriminated uh, by the mainstream media but we have not given up we are writing and we are contributing very a small thing in society yeah true yes. so move to the next question with due respect what in your opinion as a minority activist are the prime issues that minority group face in south asia region i believe that minority groups in south asia should not try to uh, try to uh, 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 try to fight their case against the so called uh, majority community i think i should um, uh, i should Uh, explain it uh, uh, a bit more 
द मेजोरिटी कॉम्युनिटी एंड द माइनॉरिटी कॉम्युनिटी शुड नॉट फाइट दैट इज नॉट द राइट वे राइट अप्रोच आई एम नॉट सेइंग दैट माइनॉरिटीज आर फाइटिंग the communist the 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 right wing forces want all the time that minority and major majority should fight so that majority politics should always win and those who belong to majority community should always vote for the majority party i will give you one example in india the majority community is hindu so the hindu nationalist parties they want that always hindus and muslims should fight at least at perception level so that hindu should support the hindu nationalist party and if hindu support uh, uh, that hindu nationalist party then minorities vote will not count it will not matter why it will not matter because in democracy you need to have 50 plus 1 vote to win it so anybody who has got 49 vote does not carry any uh, worth because we do not have any proportional representation in india so my point is that the solution of minority politics is not to position minority politics against the majority communities because not all members of majority communities uh, are against minority groups second minority politics should also not wage their struggle in isolation the the real solution for the problem of minority is unity of the oppressed mm-hmm. unity of the oppressed for example in pakistan if hindus are minority let's say if christians are minority they should try to forge a union a unity between uh, from with the progressive sections of the majority community also the muslims also and they should they should fight better collectively they should never try to create this impression that okay okay we are minority we will fight our case our own we will float our own party nobody is stopping minority from floating any party you must float your own party but in democracy it will not take you further so in india if i am a muslim and if i have to fight for the my rights i should try to forge a unity with dalits with adivasi with backward classes with secular people with left forces and we should fight collectively we should never try to create an impression that we are against majority communities in fact the hindutva forces the right wing forces want it that you fight your battle against majority communities so that they can go to people and they will say oh look at muslims are against hindus so all hindus should unite and they should vote for hindu party that should not be done because we always remember it or we should always remember the fact that the problem of minorities is not because a state is only uh, doing injustice to you there are also a section of minority community who is also working as collaborator so every every person in minority community is not great and every person in majority community is not to be condemned so we have to forge a unity between secular forces we have to forge our unity on the basis of justice we should forge our unity on the basis of ideology on the basis of principle not on the basis of caste class and gender okay i am hindu so my uh, friend always be a hindu if i am a muslim my friend always be a muslim no we have to see which hindu is doing what which muslim is talking what so our unity should be based on principle on ideas on our vision not our caste our color our race people from majority community can be equally oppressive people from minority community can be equally oppressive in our country what is happening the majorities are hindus so hindu ruling classes are doing injustice maybe in your country the muslims are majority so the muslim ru- ruling classes are doing injustice to non muslim that doesn't mean that all muslims are bad in pakistan or all hindus are bad in india so we have to forge unity on the basis of uh, of, of of our vision our ideas not on the basis of our color and caste yeah i also thinks like that also because you spend lot of time on working on social justice can you explain social justice may help people realize their human right or is social justice incompatible with human rights absolutely human rights social justice democracy secularism they all go together secularism is not against religious belief i am a hindu you are a muslim if you go to temple if you go to mosque that doesn't mean 
that uh, we are against secularism secularism in south indian context is very simple thing faith is private matter you can go to masjid you can go to church you can go to temple you may worship god you may not worship god but when you are making policies we should not oppose anybody on the basis of religion mahatma gandhi leader of indian national congress the father of nation in india has also said that state has nothing to do with the religion similarly qaid e azam mohammad ali jinnah the father of nation of pakistan has also said in constituent assembly that pakistan is created but pakistan is for everybody for hindus for muslim for sikh for isai for women for men everybody so social justice human rights equalities they are they are all together democracy they are all together our religious belief is our own personal matter i am a hindu or i am a born hindu but i in uh, if my friend is a muslim they come to my room i offer them chadar they offer namaz that that has never clashed with my faith that has never clashed with my faith islam and hinduism is not against each other leaders are leaders from one community are deliberately trying to put islam and hinduism against each other no in your organization hindu muslim sikh isai they can all work together at your office somebody can do puja somebody can offer namaz somebody may not offer namaz that is their personal belief we should never fight on on religious faith in quran there is also um uh, there is also a message like uh, which says that your religion for you, your uh, for you my religion for me so we should never fight i think uh, we should never fight quran has also said several times that don't say bad thing about the god of um of, of people from other faith because they will in return will say bad thing about your faith also so uh, in quran also the uh, quran also the message is very much there that god has created people and the messenger the prophet's duty is to go and tell the message whether some person will convert to islam or not this is not your responsibility so you can bring good message to me but you cannot force me you cannot discriminate me because even if i do not share my faith with you but we are human being so we must have brotherhood we must have um, our, our solidarity human beings animals they should also live in harmony so i believe that social justice minority rights are not against any religion no if you are speaking for the rights of hindus in pakistan you are true muslim if i am speaking for the rights of muslim i am true hindu that has nothing to do with uh, religion so this is very false binary in um, in 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 south asian context secularism has a very limited meaning that all citizens are equal in the eyes of the state in the eye of law before law everybody is equal that's all informative answer i must say you authored many articles in urdu which is great uh, but you are apparently aware of india anti urdu campaign because it is a muslim language do you think urdu language belong to muslim community as well no i know urdu also i know farsi also i know arabic also and you know i was reading farsi book and the fry pan is called tawa tawa in farsi tawa and now in modern farsi they say mahi tabe so the tawa word is farsi and my mother tongue in bihar is bhojpuri we also call tawa we do not have any other word for a fry pan in urdu we also call tawa in hindi we also call tawa kursi is arabic word we we cannot say yan hindi mein bolte hain yan we say it in hindi yan nobody understand yan duniya arabic word so hindi urdu arabic persian they are all linked languages we have to learn from each other it is very sad that hindu right wing forces and some communal forces have not supported urdu as they have supported it urdu is not the language of pakistan urdu is not the language of india urdu is language of people and when i say people people include both hindus and muslims when mahatma gandhi was assassinated not many people know this fact that his fir in delhi was reported was written in urdu language so it is wrong to say 
that uh, Urdu is the language of uh, Muslims and Hindi is the language of Hindu. No, during colonial time, because of communal forces, sectarian people, Urdu was attached to Muslims and Hindi was attached to uh, Hindi, uh, Hindu. That is not like that. We must learn all the languages. You should learn Hindi. I should learn Urdu. They are, they are, uh, uh, they are sisters. They are brothers. They enrich one another. So I do not believe um, that we should discriminate um, um, uh, language. And people of South Asia has got great capacity to learn several languages. I think leaders from Pakistan and India should understand that if you support all kinds of the languages, we will become a great power as far as language and culture and intellectual activities is concerned. Okay, I appreciate your answer. As a member of majority group, how often you brought up the situation and difficulties involving Indian Muslim? How would you approach this issue in which you are worried about Indian Muslim? All the Muslim have, have played vital role in economic development in India. Muslims are integral part of Pakistan, so India. Similarly, Hindus living in Pakistan are integral part of Pakistan. Somehow partition has happened and it is not in your hand or my hand to undo that thing. People of the future, people of the subcontinent has to decide. I cannot do it, you cannot do it. But till then, we have to live in peace, in harmony, and Muslims are contributing not less than Hindus as far as economy, society, and politics of India is concerned. Similarly, Christians and Hindus are equally supporting. Mm -hmm. Most of uh, people, most of Muslims are workers, they are artisans, they are film actors, they are in all professions, they are even in army. <laughs> And when, uh, unfortunately, fight between India and Pakistan has happened, that should never happen. But when hand, when happened, Indian Muslims fought on the side of India. And Hindus and Christians fought with Pakistan against India. So nationalism is also there. So my point is that no government should discriminate its own people. And I want to say one thing that there was uh, 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 one person, his name is Dr. Himayu Kabir, who was associated with Maulana Azad, our first education minister. He also became, Himayu Kabir also became education minister of India. And he wrote one pamphlet on, on minority rights. And he said at one place, why there should be minority rights? Because somebody could ask these questions, Mr. Abhay Kumar, you are not a Muslim. You belong to majority community. Why should... Uh, you advocate minority rights. So he said, Himayu Kabir said in his uh, lecture that minority rights must be protected. Minority must be protected because a society which is diverse, a society which has got people from different religion, culture, that society is in a better situation to deal with difficult problem. A, flower, a, a bouquet which has got several flowers is much beautiful than a bouquet which has got one set of flowers. So if uh, non-Muslims are in great number in Pakistan, if non-Hindus are in great number in uh, India, their culture, their civilization, their uh, history, they are all, uh, they all become part of the national culture and it strengthens national culture of India and Pakistan. We should never think that non-Muslims in Pakistan are less Pakistani and non-Hindus in India are less uh, Indian. No, it is not like that. Non-Muslims mm -hmm. are loyal Pakistani in Pakistan. Uh, Non-Hindus are similarly loyal Indians uh, uh, in, in India. So we should never question anybody's, uh, anybody's loyalties, anybody's patriotism. At the same time, we should try to forge cultural, intellectual trade relationship between India and Pakistan. We could have uh, let's say, joint in the, uh, 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 research project as far as human rights is concerned. These things should be welcome. And I think both government of Pakistan and India should listen to the appeal of the people from the subcontinent that visa norms should be relaxed. 
and i think uh, cultural exchange should happen a students from jnu and other universities from india should be facilitated to study at qaid e azam university and other university in pakistan and similarly a students from qaid e azam and other universities should be welcomed in india we are same people somehow unfortunately we fought we we uh, we uh, we uh, did not reach any agreement uh, partition happened people died uh, it, 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 this was a tragedy but we should try to forget the uh, tragedy at the same time take lesson from those tragedy and live like brothers uh, live like um, uh, brothers and sister live like uh, united family yes thank you the other question is mob violence have been a concern in india for a couple of years as the country had witnessed serious outbreak of mob attacks why the human right organization and the judiciaries are silent how can we limit the rise in mob lynching in india see uh, mob lynching is definitely a very serious issue in india i think uh, muslims have been attacked uh, in the name of uh, possessing beef that is cow's meat and some dalits were also dragged into that issue and they were also beaten up uh, very badly so both muslims and dalits uh, have been um, uh, made to suffer and uh, several scholars have written book on that activists have spoken against that human rights organization have also taken a note of that in some cases judiciary has also taken action but the most unfortunate part of this incident is that those who are involved in attacks on minorities and dalits are given some sort of impunity some sort of protections by the state by the administration by the police and why they are given protection because uh, the ruling uh, classes the hindu majoritarian parties they believe that if such issues the fight between hindus and muslims if if they continue then it will be easy for them to keep the society polarized and then it will benefit uh, hindu nationalist parties uh, uh, because they expect that the hindus will vote for hindus and the muslims will vote for let's say secular party and they will always win so this is really very very serious issue but i will say that in india those who do not support uh, such inhuman uh, politics and such human rights violation are uh, speaking against them or writing are um, filing cases are seeking justice at different at, at different uh, places but much more need to be done and we strongly condemn it and we have to also keep in mind that such uh, uh, policies are being uh, promoted just to keep people polarized on religion and sometime uh, muslims are being also attacked for uh, um, for uh, attacking hindu women so you might have heard the concept of lab jihad in india it is a false theory a lab jihad according to hindu nationalists is that muslim men are deliberately trying to fool hindu women and they are not only marrying them but also trying to increase the number of muslims that is all false love is made by the choice of the people neither male nor female are robot they are not uh, um a uh, machine that uh, somebody will deceive them if i like you or you like me this is our personal choice but somehow even the issue of love is being politicized and it is also linked with hindutva forces designed to control the sexuality of the women dr ambedkar bhim rao ambedkar who was the chairman of the drafting committee and the masiya of the dalits and untouchable has also said that the issue of caste cannot be understood in um, uh, in uh, isolation of gender questions in other words gender and caste are linked so not only lower caste women, uh, men are suffering not only lower caste dalits are suffering in hindu society but also women are suffering because women sexuality is controlled they are not given freedom their position is degraded so the love jihad issue is also related to the question of controlling women and you know that in modern society due to social media due to education and other um 
uh, avenues people are freely exercising their choice a hindu is marrying a muslim or a muslim is marrying a hindu a upper caste is marrying a lower caste and lower caste is marrying upper caste so hindu nationalists who are conservative forces they want to maintain dominance of the upper caste they do not want that such changes should happen and society should become democratized that is why they are also attacking dalits and also minorities who are marrying upper caste women so the point is that not only mob lynching but also the issue of love jihad is also big threat to human rights and civil rights of the people but yes we are uh, speaking against them we are fighting but much more need to be taken and we hope that the judiciary other human rights organizations should take this issue much more seriously and human rights of people must be protected in each and every condition exactly thanks uh, the next question is what exactly is a caste census what the major significance of caste census for caste of india why is the government opposed to a caste census see caste census was done in united india when india and pakistan and bangladesh were one country united india you could say uh caste was caste census was done till 1931 but in 1941 that could not be completed because of second world war okay and 1947 what has happened that india and pakistan became two separate uh, uh, country so after 1947 when india became independent post colonial state did not continue with caste uh, census so in census Uh, uh indian government is seeking information about religious uh, identity so you will be asked whether you are a hindu or whether you are muslim or whether you are sikh or whether you are christian similarly you are uh, you are you, you have to tell your identity about uh, dalit dalit is a political term the official term is scheduled caste whether you are scheduled caste or not scheduled caste are those who in the colonial time were known as depressed classes or untouchables or mahatma gandhi has called them harijan okay so they were uh, treated as untouchables dr ambedkar uh, said them untouch um, uh, depressed classes so you have to give information about your caste scheduled caste you have to also give information about uh, scheduled tribes tribe you know it is called qabila in urdu and arabic also qabila in india this qabila is uh, called janjati janjati and schedule means uh, fairies it is called uh, uh, in hindi um, uh, uh, janjati so so schedule caste schedule tribe and uh, religious identity these three things are 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 counted um, uh, religious identity is counted if you are uh, schedule caste that is uh, dalit or unt- untouchable ex untouchable this is counted and if you are adivasi that is called scheduled tribes or indigenous people that these are counted but in india obc that is called other backward classes obc other backward classes obc is a big group in india and according to mandal commission which was implemented in 1990 in india mandal commission report says that in india the population of obc other backward classes uh, is around 52% but several uh, scholars have argued that the number of obc is much more than uh, 52% and one thing you have to also keep in mind that obc is not a religious category obc is are not only hindus but obc is are also muslims our friends from pakistan should also know this fact that within the obc 80% of indian muslims are included and they are given reservation 80% of indian muslims are covered under obc reservation and they also get reservation as par with hindu obc or christian obc so the obc is not a religious category it is it is a category based on backwardness socially and educationally backward classes are obc okay so the obc include hindu also and muslims also but one thing you have to also keep in mind that obc reservation was implemented in 1990 and this is 2021 so almost three th- uh, three decades have gone even in three decades the condition of other backward classes has not improved including hindu other backward classes and muslim other backward classes also and christian other backward classes also so the condition has not improved and while their uh, population is 52% they are given reservation just 
and even that 27% reservation is not fulfilled in public sectors, in educational in, uh, institutes, and also in government services. So OBC is around just 10 to 12% in, uh, in services. And in public university, you find very less OBC professor in JNU also, which is considered a left university, progressive university, but you will find that the number of OBC professor is very less, very, very less, very, very less. So there is a demand by the lower caste groups that why should not our identity at OBC should be counted, how much OBC is in job, how much OBC is in university, information about OBC, other backward classes should also be compiled. And when you compile information about OBCs, you have to also compile information about upper caste because you cannot um, know the situation of one community and you may not know the situation of another community. Why the counting of upper caste is also needed because you will not be able to do comparative study. You understand? If I'm going to know the status of Muslim women in Pakistan, if I do not have data about Muslim men, then how will I say that women are good or women are in a bad situation? But what is happening that upper caste people in India who have a very strong lobby in, in politics, in media, in government, they are afraid. They are afraid. Why they are afraid? They think that if caste census is done and if report is out, then the perception that upper caste people who constitute only 10 to 15 percent, they are occupying most of the seats will be revealed. People will come to know the lower caste will have data, the lower caste will have evidence and they will start doing politics. OK, we OBC belong. We OBC uh, has 52 percent population in India, but why we are just 10 percent in bureaucracy? We OBC have 52 percent reservation, but uh, sorry, population, but why we are only 4 percent in uh, top positions in let's say bureaucracy and higher education? So such narrative can come up. OK, so that is why upper caste people are afraid. One thing you have to also keep in mind in India, there is called SC reservation, but a scheduled caste reservation. There is a scheduled tribe reservation. There is OBC reservation, and there is economically um, economically backward uh, people reservation EWS, economically weaker section. So the reservation is around 50 to 60 percent. Okay. So what is happening? The rest 50 percent or 40 percent seats are open seats. That is called unreserved category. That unreserved category should be open to everybody for Dalis, for women, for ST, for upper caste, for general, everybody. But somehow upper caste people are taking all seats in unreserved category. For example, I will give you an example of Pakistan. You support 50% seats are reserved for, let's say, minority women in Pakistan. And 50% seats are open, unreserved. So that 50% doesn't mean that only upper caste Muslim women will go and seek job. You have equal rights. Suppose if you get more marks, then you should not be given reservation within women quota. You should be given reservation in general quota. And another woman should take your seat. You understand my point? So that is why people, upper caste people are opposing. And there is also a right wing tendency in also in politics. They believe that if counting of the caste is done in Hindu society, the Hindu unity is be, will be broken. But I believe if Pakistan has Muslim uh, community, if Pakistan in Pakistani society, if you have some Muslims who are backward, some Muslims who are lower caste, and if they are not treated well, if government no uh, do some survey, do some study, bring about data, and if they try to take some measures to improve their condition, if they empower, then Pakistani society will become a stronger. It will not become weaker. Giving reservation for Muslim women in Pakistan will make Pakistani society stronger. Giving reservation to non-Muslims in Pakistan will make Pakistani society stronger. Similarly, giving reservation, protecting the rights so women, marginalized community will make India stronger. But those people who are sitting at the uh, at the top, they think that giving too much rights to people will will uh, strengthen those people and they will start questioning uh, the ruling classes. So it is better to keep them suppressed. But no, it will not happen because people are having dialogue. People are getting um, uh, aware about the new ideas. Even you and me are talking across the border. We are spreading ideas. So caste census, I want to tell you 
that caste census will be done later or sooner the ruling classes will try to suppress it they are definitely suppressing it but one thing we have to keep in mind that in democracy the number is very important thing in india the majority is not hindus don't say majority is hindus in one way i was saying in my discussion that majority is hindu 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 no majority is marginalized community in india so they will fight for their rights and we also support caste census let's see let's hope that it will be done soon and it will done through tahreek it will be done through movements the government will not allow you to uh, take caste question caste census so easily but people are protesting let's say and even many allied parties of the ruling class the hindutva parties they are also demanding caste census because they know that their vote bank is uh, obc communities so let's see let's see let's hope that uh, we should build up uh, more and more a strong movement for uh, demanding caste census we all stand in solidarity with caste census because if we do not have data the government will not be in a better position to implement good policies so to improve the situation of people marginalized people data information seeking information is good thing and in modern time if if private companies are able to seek so much data suppose if i buy one product from amazon tomorrow i get one suggestions so for government technology has uh, made a great advancement keeping some information about what is your job how much your income which caste do you belong that is not a big thing it is not going to drain our resources there is the problem of lack of will power there is a problem in the mindset people at the top they are thinking that if lower caste are given more rights the upper caste uh, positions will we can know if women with lower caste are empowered society will be strengthened and when society will be strengthened upper caste will also be strengthened yes so can you address some common misunderstanding regarding caste census as an muslim as you may be aware muslim in uttar pradesh are also seeking a caste census for the states under privileged i have told you i think uh, in my previous uh, answer also that obc other backward classes it is not caste it is not religion in our constitution it is said that a state is not prevented to take a steps to address social and economic backwardness of the people so on the basis of social and economic backwardness the commission has listed the group of the caste which are backward in that group you will find that muslim several muslim dozens of muslim caste were also included i think i i i don't have time otherwise i would have told you each and every uh, caste name of the muslim community but just keep one thing in mind overwhelming population of indian muslims are under obc reservations so if obc reservation will be implemented in good spirit then the questions of muslim backwardness will be addressed but why this is not happening there are several reasons number one reservation is only given in public sector government owned institutions in india also in pakistan also privatization is happening at a very fast sp speed privatization is attacking reservation in a sense that in private education in private uh, offices reservation is not given okay so suppose if there is any university which has got 1000 employment and if there is 27% reservation then 270 seats will go to backward caste but if i privatize that university if i sell it to some private company then there is no reserve seat and if there is no reservation then obc people dalit people that uh, adivasi they don't come um, they, they they are not able to get any seat so to improve to address the situation of the backwardness of muslims we have to also address the questions of privatization we have to say no privatization no privatization if privatization is happening anywhere then we have to say give reservation in private sector also first our first position should be no privatization but if somewhere privatization is happening and we are not able to stop it then we have to say give privatization because you cannot say that 
people from marginalized communities are not capable enough if you have a job let's say of a translator mutarjim if you have a job of let's say clerk if you have a job of a researcher how will you say that in india backward classes people have uh, no merit so you should give job to them also so to address the questions of muslim backwardness we have to demand caste questions also because if caste quest, caste sorry caste census also because if caste census is done then the condition of muslims will also be uh, brought to public we will get to know that how many muslims are working at university and colleges how many muslims are in service commission how many muslims are in railway and in um, government sectors so we have to do caste census our demand should be caste census our demand should be that stop privatization our demand should be that a state must and a state should spend more and more money in social security like health like education like employment our demand should be that minority bodies should be strengthened our demand should be that muslim should be given reservation muslim should be given reservation if reservation is not the best policy let's assume if many people are not agreeing to reservation then we should say that okay if you are not willing to give reservation then why 13 to 14% muslims are under represented at university you take some other measures okay you take some other measures ensure that they are 15% when it comes to jail they are over represented in jail but why they are under represented uh, at university so if reservation is not the best policy let's assume for a while then give some uh, other incentives give them some marks give them some other incentives so that muslims should come so uh, caste census uh, socio economic development these are all interlinked opposing privatization these are all uh, these are all linked and then we have to also oppose communal politics in india communal politics means hindu muslim politics should be opposed should be opposed those people who are trying to set one community or another community should be isolated so these are all related issues and i am telling you caste census will not improve the conditions of backward classes but it will address the poverty of india also the backwardness of india also thank you for clearing it uh, the next question is hindu nationalist frequently distribute false information about indian muslim population and the indian media does not report the news instead they would add jihad to everything as a journalist how will you deal with this see you remember corona pandemic corona yeah. pandemic lockdown was imposed in india in 2020 march after five or six days government was not able to give relief to people then migrant workers started gathering at uh, what should i say at bus stop at railway bus stops they started migrating to their places native places it created big law and order problem it created big uh, health hazard also because uh, government is uh, imposing what should i say uh, that lockdown so that people should maintain physical and social distance but now people in hundreds and thousands they are going to their places they are gathering at a bus stop in delhi so government was in really big crisis the modi government was exposed that it it has not done enough preparation uh, and it has brought a, what should i say lockdown without giving relief to people at that time the government thought that we have to divert the attention of the people to something else and in every society when government fails it, it tries to demonize muslim uh, minority community muslims community for all the failure in india the minority is muslim maybe that in your country the the, the villain would be the victim would be non muslims so the so the weaker section was was made a victim it was made a scapegoat and I, this is not my word even maharashtra high court has said that muslims were made a scapegoat and their organization tablighi jamaat which uh goes to muslim uh, and uh, it says that um, you should uh, follow the basic teachings of islam so that tablighi jamaat was made a uh, victim and it was said that tablighi jamaat and its members are gathering at its office in uh, nizamuddin in delhi and from there corona is spreading okay and then media started spreading all kinds of the lies okay 
but now the court is saying that muslims were made a uh, scapegoat we we were few journalists in india who oppose such communal politics since beginning my writings are still there somebody can go and check it we have said that it is possible that uh, there may be some uh, cases of corona uh, positive in a muslim community but this is also true of hindu community corona is not coming and attacking people seeing their religion and no people no community is inviting corona pandemic that oh come to our community get infected and so that we become infected we will spread this disease to majority community and then majority community will suffer so these were all false stories even the media even the court has taken note of it but what is happening in india that mainstream media is in the pocket of the government because they are being financed by big capital classes the big capital classes are supporting the government because government is working in favor of them so this is a, this is unholy nexus big capital rich classes business classes are funding political parties political parties winning elections forming the government government working in support the big, big classes against the interest of the people big classes investing money and creating big big organization buying media houses and those journalists are supporting the policies of the government this is vicious nexus i don't know what is the situation in pakistan but this is the trend all across the globe maybe that in in one country it is more in another country such phenomena is less that is possible but somehow there is unholy alliance between political classes business classes and media giants so the solution is that we need to think about alternative voices we should not give up we should not uh, feel de- uh, frustrated we should do we should contribute very little we have been contributing i think you are um, uh, holding this discussion i am talking i write you write we have uh, our own project we are very little we are doing so we have to create our own alternative media we have to also use social media creatively and we have to uh, forge bridge between people to people across the uh, boundary and we have to work with this spirit that human being is one family human being is one humanity is one people may be divided on caste class race and religion but when it comes to human rights when it comes to civil rights when it comes to socio political economic rights all people are the same and we have to work as an united family and we have to speak for the justice we have to speak against injustice if the perpetrators are from my caste my country my religion we should not uh, care about that fact we have to oppose injustice and we have to uphold justice yes thank you for the awareness people like you show the solidarity with muslim community therefore what message would you offer to the new generation to encourage all the communities to be more united very simple message i have already said uh, that guldasta that bouquet is beautiful when it has got colors it has got colorful flowers from different plants so a strong society is one where people from different religious faiths communities caste identities they are living so we should never try to 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 impose uniformity we should try to cherish plurality we call it in urdu tanawu taksariyat so we have to celebrate diversity we a life is very short but we are trying to prolong conflict just forget conflict just give up conflict our life is very short and we have to cherish this life this life is very beautiful but we have made our life hell because we are overpowered by the spirit of jealousy we are overpowered by the spirit of feeling great takabbur is there in our heart these are all very bad thing just i am i request you 
you have two roti just share one roti with your neighbor and feel that how much you feel happy you eat four roti and your neighbor has come and he has asked food and you have just said go away i am nothing you will feel that at night you your belly is full but your heart is not filled so the my point is hindu muslims are all human beings it is a matter of personal choice whether you are a hindu or whether you are a muslim or whether you are a christian we should not go into that conflict we should try to forge unity unity should be between human beings unity should be between people of all religions all faith unity should also be be between animals plants water because our survival is dependent on the survival of nature also so we should not become greedy we should try to uh, try to forge friendship with uh, with uh, our friends our neighbor and that is why uh, i feel very happy that uh, your organization has given me the opportunity to express uh, my views and i uh, thank my friend across the border my pakistani friend that uh, they have uh, given me this honor to speak i express my love my gratitude for all of them i invite you you invite me and the friendship should continue thank you so much so the second last question is how can you and sarim work together in south asian context to promote the rights of persecuted minorities rise above our religious sectarian identity caste identity we have to stand for justice so i just say one thing that if we feel so much pain to see our near ones our friends our family members become sick how could you how could one allow a person from different faith to be killed and we remain silent i i am giving you this test any muslim if dies in india or if any hindus or non muslims die in pakistan i want to give i want to request my uh, uh, indian friends and pakistani friends remember one thing at that time what if that persons would have been your son your nephew your wife your mother how much care we do for our family members but why do we become indifferent to uh, people from um, other faiths and other community that is why recently last week i wrote in my column that national security qaumi salamati is less important than insani hukuk human rights and i stand by it you call me um, anti national i don't mind but i will say that human rights of indians or pakistanis or bangladeshis of sri lankans of arabs of people will follow different path people will have different world view in jnu we fight somebody is uh, uh, eyeing at communist revolution somebody thinks that uh, that ambedkar right um, um, ambedkar right revolution should happen somebody thinks there should be revival of khilafa somebody thinks that there should be the rule um, there 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 should be a system based on gandhian idea somebody is thinking that there there should be a system based on samarkar's idea somebody is thinking india should be a hindu rashtra so people have different ideas so the ideas will be there sects will be there caste will be there religion religious differences will be there but can we live together yes we must spread our ideas peacefully without using any coercion i have every right to tell you that um, hindu religion is very good you have every right to tell me uh, brother abhay why don't you read quran islam is very good religion similarly michael can come and he can say why not you read bible bible is a very good religion but it should be based on peace there should not be any coercion used and realizing that we have differences we must celebrate our differences and we should build up a society based on equality justice liberty human rights this should be our goal and if you work uh, uh, work through this idea i don't think that there is any barrier between you and me uh, birds have no barrier i am just asking we say that birds have no mind animals have no mind but you tell me one thing the fish which is crossing let's say sir, indus river from let's say pakistan and it is coming to india do they feel 
that uh, now they are indian and earlier they were pakistani if the birds from india go to pakistan if they sit there do they feel oh i will not eat fruits here because uh, i am indian this is pakistani uh, trees and we should not take fruits from pakistan so if the birds if if the animals if the fish if they can be so cosmopolitan if they are not sectarian why we human beings we have thousands of years of uh, our intellectual history our uh, humanity has produced thousands of uh, scholars philosophers from aristotle socrates uh, jesus christ prophet muhammad buddha bhagwan mahavir ambedkar karl marx i can name thousands of people maulana maududi thousands of intellectual um, uh, have come if, but we are so sectarian that we fight i i, I am looking forward to um, the visiting your country i invite you to come to our country and we have to work as uh, brother as sister and we have to uh, think about building building peace and reducing our conflicts and our differences yeah finally i would like to express my gratitude for your time and extend an invitation to a conference that will held shortly after the epidemic has passed would you want to come along with us and perhaps see pakistan <laughs> see uh, there is one song in border film uh, uh, and which uh, says that uh, mm, uh, the birds and the uh, and the rivers uh, have no border and if we were birds and rivers we could have uh, 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 cross the border yes i am looking forward to visiting it uh, your country it will be my honor and i have read a lot i i know and i love several poets activists writers uh, from pakistan and i am telling you in jnu where i am sitting we do not uh, read uh, many let's say uh, indian born scholars i am telling you and his uh, his, his 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 poetry uh, we read fast lazim hai ki hum bhi dekhenge jab zulm o sitam ke kohe gira ruhi ki tarah ud jayenge so i am i am if if sometime i will show you also on my uh, on jnu campus also full of habib jalib and 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 fast poetry you could find on the wall so uh, uh, writers poets have no uh, boundary tagore ramindranath tagore would have been uh, very popular in pakistan also he is also read there also lord buddha he is not indian i am telling you lord buddha belongs to everybody prophet muhammad belongs to everybody he is not only muslim that is all wrong so good people intellectuals philosopher paigambars rishi muni they belong to everybody uh, guru nanak is not only for us uh, six only he is for everybody and guru nanak also uh, um, were influenced by several sufi uh, and saints also baba farid uh, uh couplets and his uh, ideas are also there in 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 six uh, uh, granth also in their holy text also so we are looking forward to coming but just pray that those people who are sitting at the top they should never uh, look every good activity with suspicion people are visiting india or people are visiting pakistan out of their love out of uh, curiosity they want to learn from each other they have no business Um, with uh, the dirty game of the ruling classes we have no business for me uh, brothers of pakistan sister of pakistan sir as dear as brothers of india brothers of pakistan or brothers of any country so let's hope that both the countries should understand the very simple thing like they should at least possess the brain of a of, of a fish of a bird very little brain if they possess very little brain a bird a fish of uh, animal they will become less uh, cruel than they are possessing big brain and they are uh, 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 they are acting more cruel so let's let's hope that visa rule are relaxed let's hope that journalists from both the countries visit because earlier journalists from india used to work in pakistan uh, journalists from pakistan used to work in india so let's uh, uh, facilitate um, uh, our uh, uh, border to border uh, uh, and people to people uh, um, uh, contact and it will be my honor that i visit your uh, place and uh, and it will also be our honor 
if you visit jnu delhi you see kutub minar lal qila and other places inshallah thank you for sharing your knowledge with us thank you for your time i really appreciate it god bless you take care